Hello everyone, welcome back to another Pro Play Games deck profile video. Today I'm going to be showing you what I believe to be the best control deck in OPO2 format. This is going to be a Zephyr deck profile. So he's very good at defending himself. He's one of the most uh, defensive decks once you get into the late game. And he leverages the 10 drop Kuzan very well with his leader effect in order to take control of the game after getting to 10 Dawn and then using that tempo advantage to close out the game. So he's a really powerful leader for the black cards and then we use purple cards to kind of supplement a little bit of ramp, a little bit of card draw and then the black bombs to wrap up the game. So. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> a great option for control players in the new format, and I'm going to show you this particular build of him, and I hope you guys enjoy. So that's the leader. He's Zephyr. I'm moving along. Uh, we're going to go in Dawn order, so starting out with the one drops. We only have a single one drop in the deck, um, and we usually will, won't play her most of the time, but she is pretty much our version of Otama in the black color, she's Zuru. And black is all about reducing card costs in order to dis use destruction effects um, based on the cost of the opponent's cards. So her reduction effect is pretty good uh, for the cost of one. And otherwise she's just a 2k guard. So very good in that sense. Moving right along, we have three ultis. So Ulti is actually going to get her time in the spotlight uh, in OPO2 mostly because when you are told to go first uh, by the opponent, most of the decks that go against you want our go second decks, kind of like Kinemon when they want to play their Okiku on the first turn of the game, you can go ahead and on your second turn of the game, tap 2, play Ulti, and then tap 1 and get uh, on even numbers and even numbers is very important for this deck because you're trying to play a 10 drop card so you get max value from being in even numbers so she's very good in the early game and then in the late game you discard her to your various discard effects that we're gonna get into later so ulti at 3 next we're gonna go into some staple purple cards we're gonna be playing Kurozumi Hiro Higurashi and He's basically a 1k guard that also serves as a blocker in the mid to late game. And you can also play him in, in your first turn going second, which insulates a little bit of your life. You have to defend your life pretty aggressively because you only have four. And he helps you do that quite efficiently, so that's why you play him. Moving along, we're going to play four Sasagis for the very similar reason to why we play ulti. We play Sasaki sometimes when we don't have ulti, we summon Sasaki on 3. Hope that it survives on the way back. Um, it survives Vistas naturally because it's 4k, not 3. So it's pretty resilient in play and it only loses out to Yamato's of the world. But for the most part, it's reasonably sticky uh, on curve and it can be useful as a 2k guard in every other scenario. It's a very solid card. Again, for the purpose of getting yourself into those even dawn numbers so that you can curve out better. I'm going to move along to the anti aggro card of the deck, Kobe. And from OPO2, all the black cards that were released, Kobe is one of the most powerful ones in terms of tempo advantage. When you fall behind on board, you play Kobe, only three dawn, discard a card from your hand and kill anything three or less. So, something like Zoro's no longer a problem and he has 1k guard as well so he's very versatile moving along to another 2k counter with a bit of a useful effect um, you tap her and reduce one opponent's card by two you can combo this with the, the turn that you're going into the 10 drop if you play her or otherwise you just defend your life with a 2k guard so that's Toshigi the black colors have a lot of 2k guard options and I want to say that these that I chose are 
the most versatile when you have to play them but most of the time it's ideal that you don't have to play any of them but these are pretty good even when you have to use them so that's why i chose those for the versatility um, moving along to what is essentially the best card in the black strategy and the reason why you play black i would say it's borsalino you can turn your leader into a 6k leader anytime and he can be easily removed by different uh different event cards or character cards that exist and because of that he's a he's a very good threat but also a very good defensive card as well so we play four of him to round out the four drops we have another addition from opio 2 kuzan he is probably going to be one of the staple cards in black for the remainder of the game so very good to get your copies now because he's going to be part of every black strategy uh, for the rest of the game I, I, I'm assuming simply because he just draws a card very efficient 4 5 stat uh, 4 cost 5k attack power and he also has a no no dawn cost when attacking effect reduce the opponent's card by four cost so he synergizes with everything the deck is trying to do and he's a very value attacker so very good card we're gonna play another staple this time of the purple color it's gonna be queen so again the same as borsalino turning your leader into a 6k when you need to uh, blocking and then also having combo power while at the same time drawing you some cards uh, black typically when you play uh, only black cards kind of like smoker they lack a little bit of card advantage and that's very necessary because of the different uh, discard effects that you have in the deck like kobe so you want to accrue some amount of card advantage and queen allows you to do that and it also lets you discard cards without guard and then hopefully draw into more uh, defensive cards so played at four definitely a staple we have king king is um our first of two bombs we play king because he's very cost effective for the stats that it gives you and he has a good spot on the curve to deal with a lot of different threats specifically from green and red which are ducks that are trying to rush you down so he's just very effective for the cost like i said and he segues you from the mid into the late game very well so that's why we play three of him we don't need four simply because he doesn't have guard power and we don't want to oversaturate the deck with no guard so we only have four life so we need as much guard power as possible So we have the main card of the, I would say, all black decks that exist right now. This is the main purpose of those decks, to reach 10 Dawn and then spam out as many Kuzans as one can accrue. So we definitely want to play it at 4 because the entire strategy revolves around him and the deck becomes infinitely more powerful with him. So definitely uh, want to play 4, draw him, ramp into him and it's one of the main reasons his synergies with the purple card is one of the main reasons why a four life leader is justified in this case and definitely just a powerhouse in the format moving forward and into future sets as well and he's a great build around card and very fun to play as well just to defend ourselves a little bit better we have shockwave one of the best cards to come out from OPO2, definitely one of the best event cards. It just stops go wide aggression decks and it has a great trigger effect so it keeps us alive while we get to our 10 drop. Then to round it up, a little bit more plus 4k combo power cards in the form of Thunder Bagua. In the early game, in some matchups, you get aggressed down to two or lower life and this kind of gives you a little bit of a payoff when defending yourself by giving you the dawn that you need to ramp up your late game sooner and the trigger in life can save you sometimes so all in all a pretty good card 
and then the final card in the deck and one that has been surprisingly powerful in all the playtesting we've done so far is elephants marchu <laughs> it's a pretty funny card great interactive card against the zoro decks which is one of your less favorable matchups and this card single-handedly turns the matchup on its head if they're playing the the one drop two drop turbo type of zoro list which we predict are some of the most powerful so definitely a really good card and then it can hit seven or less dawn uh cost cards when you have the 10 drop in play and with obviously two 10 drop in play it, it destroys anything so super efficient card and it ramps you and yeah that's the deck profile guys i hope you guys find success with the control decks that you play moving forward if you guys are control players and if not now you have a little bit of an idea what you have to play against and play around when you play the aggressive decks so thank you very much for joining us and see you guys next time